Hey there, Pete Erickson here with Modev. This is part of our Inside Voice and AI, AI series where we're getting to know the speakers coming to Voice and AI in September, September 5th through 7th in Washington, DC. Find all the details at voiceand.ai. My guest today is Greg Bennett and Greg is the director of Einstein GPT uh, and conversation design at Salesforce. And I've known Greg for many years. Uh, we've also been watching Einstein uh, as a product evolve and uh, he is right at the intersection of conversation design and prompt engineering and prompt design. And we're gonna have a conversation about that and, uh, and then what's happening at uh, Voice and AI. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring up my next guest, uh, Mr. Greg Bennett. Greg, how you doing, man? It's great to see you. Doing well, great to see you too, Pete. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for, thanks for being here. And uh, like I said in my introduction, uh, you're somebody who's really lived at this intersection of conversation design and engineering. Uh, you, of course, you've been with Salesforce, which is uh, one of the leading CRM companies in the world. Um, and they have been working on AI for a long time with Einstein. In fact, they started working with us back in 2018 uh, at uh, the very first voice conference. Um, and it was great to see the involvement, but things have really evolved and really changed. And, you know, here we are. And I think last year, if I go back to the end of last year, in a conversation we had, you were one of the first ones to really mention this prompt engineering. So catch us up a little bit about you and, and what's going on with uh, in the world of conversation design meets prompt engineering. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, it was interesting because even in my talk last year at Voice of AI, I did bring up the aspect of how essentially constraining a, lang a large language model or getting large language, sorry, um, not natural language generation to produce an output in a way that is um, sort of adherent to your goals as an end user is a design task. I think lots of uh, folks in the industry sort of historically looked at it as an engineering task or potentially even a data task in the sense that, oh, we may want to retrain the model or change the model itself in order to get it to produce something appropriate. And I kind of very much liken it to um, first language acquisition. So my academic background is in linguistics. So that's always the sort of vantage point I have in my mind when I look at this. In first language acquisition, particularly with you know children, you, you as a parent in particular will teach your child the appropriate context in which to use certain words and certain phrases. So if your child says a curse word, you're not going to take them to the hospital and have them you know their brain <laughs> worked on. You're going to teach them this. This is when you say those words and when you don't. It's very similar with a large language model in that you don't want to retrain the model in order for it to put out something that is you know adherent to what you're looking for, but rather teach it the context and give it the, the guardrails or the scope of what it should produce in order to, to fit your goal. And that is done through prompt engineering and prompt design. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a, uh, I think that's well said. Um, you don't want to take your kid to the hospital, uh, <laughs> definitely. No. but you don't want to train them to speak, right? You want to train them to speak properly and you want to train them to, I think yeah. it's a really great analogy. Um, and uh, so tell us, you know, this role, this emerging role of, of you know, mm -hmm. prompt designer and prompt engineer, uh, is this similar to how, you know, when mobile came along, we had user, user mm -hmm. interface designers and we had user experience designers. And mm -hmm. I remember them both being a little incredulous that, you know, no, UI is this and UX is this. Um, is it a yeah. similar sort of relationship? I think so in the sense that, I would consider prompt design to fall within the larger umbrella of user experience. It's that the user interface itself is being created by the model. The model output right. is going to be the thing that gets sent to a user and potentially between that user and another user. Um, right. Our job as prompt designers and prompt engineers is to give the scope of what that model should produce in the interface, especially because the interface itself is now language and conversation. And if we as you know, conversation designers no longer really necessarily have control but are fixated on the minutia of exactly what word is what going to be is what's going to be written or said at a particular moment that we're now offloading that task to a large language model then our 
roles shift in that we focus more on the interaction design, that we become less the folks who are on stage saying the lines and more the first the person behind the camera directing the entire scene. These are who the participants are the, in the interaction. This is how they relate to and know one another. This is how this model output will get used between these users, how it, where it will live in space, place, time. All of those things need to get encoded into the prompt and that in and of itself is prompt design. Very, very well said. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, Einstein GPT uh, as a product. And I know that this GPT was added, uh, you know, recently, I think, in terms of yeah, mm -hmm. the product. So how has Einstein evolved now that, you know, large language models are here? Which models are you uh, working with mm -hmm. and supporting? Yeah, so it's interesting because Salesforce has always taken this approach of making sure that our customers have the degree of flexibility that is necessary to make their jobs a success, to make their business successful. And so in true Salesforce fashion, we offer multiple models to them for their use. So they can use a Salesforce homegrown large language model if they choose. They can, we also support OpenAI, Anthropic, and Cohere. And the big, I think, um, piece of the enablement work that's happening is really being able to communicate to customers, this is what each provider is really great for and how you can, as a customer, evaluate that ability against your bottom line to really think through the cost to serve. Because in some cases, certain models may be like trying to use a bazooka when you really just need like, you know, a bow and arrow. And right. thinking through what is the, you know, again, what is the best model to use for which particular outcome or business task that you're trying to enable and the value that you want to bring to your customers? Yeah, interesting. So if I'm a customer of Salesforce, um, and part of the interesting, I guess, part of the interface for Einstein is being able to select which model that I'm going to be working with. Yes. Interesting. And they have different use cases where they're going to be stronger uh, based on what the customer is trying to get done. Stronger. For Orpit's example, the one that I like to really bring to folks' attention is the sort of contrast between GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is the model that powers ChatGPT, and GPT 4. Both are incredible, incredible innovations in the world of large language models. But GPT-4 costs a considerable amount more than GPT-3.5. And so right. it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to generate you know, a graphical interface for a website, well then, yeah, you're going to have to use GPT-4 because that's the only one that can produce graphical output based on what you say to it. Or even like, you know, upload a sketch like we saw in their demo. With GPT 3.5, if you're, let's say, for example, you want a text driven output and you don't have to ground it on a huge source or corpus of data, then GPT 3.5 is probably going to be a better solution for you because it's just far more uh, cost effective. Right, right. Yeah, interesting. I know that uh, uh, earlier conversation I was having uh, was really about the spikes and, um, mm. and you know, latency requests that uh, customers oh, yes. may have. And I think there's a lot of discovery right now around those costs and just how, you know, how high those costs can go uh, based on what you're trying to get done from a latency standpoint and output standpoint and, uh, you know, CPU usage. And I mm -hmm. think that that's where the cloud providers are also going to get. It's going to be interesting um, yes. on that on that front as well. Well, let's get back to let's get back to design. Um, you're a conversation sure. designer. You're, you're a trained linguist, uh, you know. Linguistics is something too that I think is being thrust sort of into the limelight. Um, a data scientist as well. Obviously, data science has been around for a yeah. while, but now it's almost like now it's like critical because right. what data right. are you doing? But linguistics as well. It, it was kind of a, a mm -hmm. niche profession, but I feel yeah. like it's being moved into um, sort of moved into another realm. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, very selfishly as a linguist, I love it. Um, you know, I studied linguistics in undergrad and grad school, and so it's exciting to sort of see its time in the sun. Um, right. I think the one interesting part that I sort of get asked about is how linguists and data scientists work together or potentially overlap. <laughs> I think the way I kind of um, disambiguate both roles is trying to lead in, lean into the strength of each and their training. So for example, the things that linguists are really strong at and that would make them great data scientists is that linguists are 
pattern finders, that they are systems thinkers, that they are taxonomists. And so if we're working with these large swaths of data, that we can seek out patterns in the language itself and then operationalize it. And that would make for a really great data scientist, someone who's actually trying to do that at scale in a large uh, sort of numerical way. Um, I think in particular within the field of linguistics, um, I studied interactional sociolinguistics. So the kind of um, linguistics that focuses on language in everyday use and in interpersonal communication. For that particular skill set, I actually think they're really strong as conversation and prompt designers. Because again, the whole um, crux of prompt design is thinking through the interaction design. Who are the participants in the interaction? How are they orienting to one another? And if we're asking this model to produce an output for the sake of mediating that interaction, an interactional sociolinguist is going to be really, really strong at that because that's exactly the kind of training that we, we get in school. So having an interactional sociolinguist work with a data scientist in terms of the interactional sociolinguist can think through the interaction design, come up with a prompt, and the data scientist can instrument and automate or scale it, that's really where you see this sort of explosive, expansive um, force multiplier of the two. Wow, I mean, it's fascinating. I think that uh, organizations are gonna be changing the, you know, changing their tech teams around uh, a lot, around all these new capabilities. It does remind me of the, you know, the advent of the smartphone and how that really changed yeah. product teams. And it really thrust the role of user experience, you know, which previous to that was, you know, human factors engineers, became user experience designers, but then UX became such a key component of the growth of that industry. And, and I think today mm -hmm. what we're seeing is the role of conversation designer, linguist, data scientist, really playing a key part in, um, in you know, how this, how this market evolves. And um, I'm excited about these conversations. I think prompt engineering and prompt design uh, linguistics are gonna be a big part of the, the event in September. We're so excited that you're gonna be coming out and I imagine that uh, you're, the, the things you're going to talk about are right in this uh, intersection of, of design and uh, engineering. Absolutely. I look forward to giving more color to it. I know we only have a short period of time to talk through here, but I promise to bring slides and all kinds of fun stuff to walk people through how we approach it at Salesforce. If you haven't seen Greg Bennett speak, um, this is a great opportunity to meet him in person. And I, you know, I have to give a shout out as a conference organizer that there's just nothing like meeting in person. We do so much virtually now. Uh, you know, a lot of companies are still remote first, but there's a lot of science around the power of getting together uh, as people and what happens, you know, and and how we learn from one another because it's not just the information, it's it's the body language, it's everything else that that comes through. So we hope that you'll join us in uh, in September to meet up with Greg and hundreds and thousands of other people from around the world that are you know, really game to to figure out this new market. It's changed so much even since last year's conference. Uh, now we're talking about large language models, generative AI, prompt engineering, you know, certainly chatbots and conversational design, CX automation are all there, but it's a, just a completely different market now. It's going to be an exciting time in September. Greg, thanks for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you and uh, take, take good care. Have a great, have a great weekend. Thanks, you too, Pete. I'm Pete Erickson. This has been a great conversation with Greg Bennett of Salesforce. You're going to meet Greg in person. You're going to meet so many others that are on the bleeding edge of where we are today uh, with conversation design, prompt engineering, prompt design, linguistics, data science, and the rest of it. So we hope you'll join us at Voice and AI, voiceand.ai. Go check it out. And again, I'm Pete Erickson. It's been fun hanging out with you.